Hello everybody and welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. In this film I'll talk about the possibilities for electric flight. Before that however, I'd like to highlight that I'm going to host a webinar dedicated to flight planning on Saturday the 30th of January at 20 hundred hours GMT. The rationale for which comes from a debate about the same subject following a review of the accident to November 498 Alpha Golf. Details of how to join are in the description and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. The recent film on an eVTOL with some gyroplane routes raised the interesting point about electric flight and in many ways it is the gyroplane that could benefit the most from that technology. Not only are current gyroplanes almost universally limited to 560 kilos, removing the need for spare capacity, but in the main gyroplanes are flown reasonably locally and so range limitations are less an issue. I know some will take issue with that, but consider this. Around two years ago Cranfield Aerospace Solutions announced Project Fuisson, an £18 million project to refit a nine-seat twin-engine Britain Norman Islander with an electric propulsion system in conjunction with boffins notably at Rolls-Royce, Ferranti and Cranfield University. Put simply, these guys are big hitters and with a reasonable budget. The aim for phase one was to fly on batteries for around 20 minutes, with the first flight due in April 2022. Now of course these are early steps, but one does wonder if in this case we're just trying a little too hard before the technology is fully ready. After all, I'm not sure just how useful it is for Captain Bloggs to announce to his passenger he hopes to fly, maybe, for 20 minutes. Unless you have this trip to make, where technically it works, but at 18 million quid, not entirely cheap. Recently, Elon Musk of Tesla remarked he believed the crossover point for batteries beating kerosene is circa 400 watt-hours a kilogram minimum. Of course, his remarks focused upon something in, within commercial aviation, not GA. Yet batteries today mean lithium-ion, and that means the best produced batteries today have a density of around 250 watt-hours per kilogram. Which leads me to another project, this time Vertical Aerospace and the VA-1X. It's another startup with another promise to bring an air taxi to market sometime in the future. VA-1X has four tilting motors spread across the wings of an otherwise conventional layout. The machine will take off and land vertically, but transition to a more efficient fixed wing flight for crews. It promises to move 450 kilos of payload, which for them is a pilot and four passengers, at cruise speeds of at 130 knots and a usable range of 100 miles. These guys have got a massive problem because 450 kilos for a pilot and four passengers means a limit of 90 kilos per person. We might reasonably expect the early takers for air taxi services to be corporate clients. And here's the rub. Big US law or banking firms who might use these services are never in a million years going to make a group of four senior employee or guests, plus bags, laptop and kit, 90 kilos each. And here's a problem. Because what happens if you have a tubby person in the group? Do you leave him or her out? Likely not. But in future, it seems the ultimate shame is to have to order two taxis, one for the fat bloke, and then fly in a two-ship with Tubby McTubbs on the wing. 